One of the biggest challenges I've ever had for Far Gone Frontier has been trying to figure out the story of the game. In the beginning, I remember making things just because I thought they were interesting, but I never really had a clear vision. And honestly, writing stories for games kind of feels cringe. I don't know why. I think it's because you're sort of saying to the world, uh, please care about my made up stupid story. And this is absolutely carried over to the game gems I've done. I mean, all those are very vague and sort of gameplay focused. Can't even imagine doing a narrative based game jam. And this was all fine and good for the beginning of Far Gone Frontier, when all I had to focus on was really just mechanics. And I've said before, before, but a lot of my game dev back then was a lot of me thinking, can I even do this? But once you turn that corner and you realize, yeah, you can do this, it's not that hard. Well, okay, okay, it is really hard, but, but not impossible. That's when I started to realize that because I haven't thought these things out, I'm actually really holding the game back when it comes to developing the game's identity. Okay, so how do we fix that? I think it's finally time to add some story to Far Gone Frontier. I can't lie, jumping back and forth between art and story and coding, it all sort of gives me whiplash. Fortunately, there's help out there, like sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest learning platform for creatives, and there are so many classes that it actually kind of blows my mind. I always say the hardest part about learning these skills in game development is getting the right information and also not burning out. So many times I'll get frustrated trying to learn something new, but not finding the right pathway to get there. But I think this is where Skillshare really shines. With a near endless amount of classes, I personally am always drawn to the art ones. Shocking, I know, the guy that complains about coding does anything to avoid it, but sometimes that's okay okay too, just going after the things that really interest you. Skillshare is so good at funneling you down these paths, getting you start to finish on a new hobby. I stumbled into this pixel art mastery class, which I found really useful. It covered a huge range from just the basics all the way up to animation. And even though I have my own weird way of doing a lot of these things, it's really nice to see what's working for other people. They even have something they call learning paths, which is such a better way to tackle a topic than jumping from video to video. Also, joining Skillshare is a great way to support the channel. And the first 500 people to sign up using my link in the description get 20% off their first year of Skillshare. And I just want to thank Skillshare so much for sponsoring the video. Okay, before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to sort of clarify what I mean by story, because I'm not necessarily thinking I'm going to jot down all these made-up storylines for all these characters, but instead focus on these big overarching concepts and see if I like them. So initially, the game is just taking place in this desert, or uh, maybe a canyon, I think, because there's uh, all these walls. But aside from that, there's only really a couple other really interesting elements, like this traveling salesman who always felt very janky, in a good way, or the cat you do a deal with who literally takes you and puts you in a different plane of existence. These are fairly cool elements, but I want to give them more of a cohesive idea. And one thing that I kept coming back to was this idea of going sort of behind the scenes. Early on, I had the idea that when you killed a boss, an elevator would come down and would sort of take you to the next floor. I drew this thing almost a year ago, and it's sort of been in my videos with no explanation. And that's because when I put it in the game, it immediately inspired me to try to take Fargon Frontier into a different direction. One that I thought would be more interesting, but at the time, I wasn't sure it was something I could really commit to. In a lot of ways, Fargon Frontier is like a blank canvas. So committing to an idea is kind of a little scary. I've sort of been feeling like this a lot, but one thing I've been telling myself is let's just make the game, and if it's bad, we'll learn from it, and we'll make another game, instead of overly focusing on making it right the first time. Okay, so with all that said, what was the idea? When I first saw this elevator and got it in the game, my first thought was that it kind of looked like it was behind the scenes. Around the time I drew the elevator, I also made this maintenance tile set, and to me, the whole scene was giving this tongue-in-cheek vibe of almost two different worlds. The main place where the player is running around and fighting, and this behind-the-scenes world, which is sort of indicating that it's all make-believe. And I honestly kind of like that. I spent a couple days going back and forth, thinking, do I really want to take the game in this direction? I kept thinking about games like Super Mario 3, where the whole game takes place technically on a stage. Stage. And they would do these pretty charming things like how you could fall behind the set or how you were always exiting stage right. Wait, I think technically that's stage left, but you understand what I'm saying. It's a fun motif and it really does give a lot of personality. I always felt for my game that I'm really interested in going to unique locations. I mean, that's kind of why I was always drawn to doing game jams. It's genuinely fun to just make an environment and put a character in it. To tie this back to Far Gone Frontier, I started thinking, what if the game took place on a stage, like an abandoned theater? Then each level we go to is sort of analogous for a different show on that theater. And we really do set the player there. It's not like they're fake places. Then after each level, we return you back to the stage. Okay, it's an interesting idea, but before I commit to anything, I want to get some art down and see how it feels. It's probably clear by now, but I'd much rather enjoy the art part than the literally anything else part of game dev. Especially when it comes to like atmosphere and all the other garbage I don't need. It's not entirely true. I like coding sometimes. Okay, so this is the theater. I draw this baseline here because it's a top-down 2D game. I have to spawn in all these little chairs on the Y sort. Then I do a separate layer above the player that is like the balcony to give it a little bit more depth. From there, I throw it into Godot, load up some fog, make it darker, and then add in lights. And yeah, right away, this feels pretty special. It wouldn't be me if I don't add in detail that I don't need. So for no reason at all, you can literally blow up all these chairs. I'm doing good this time. That took like 10 minutes to make. Although sometimes they'll spawn loot and I don't know if I really want them to do that. From there, I try to paint out what the beginning of the game might seem like. So I strip the lantern from the player and put it on the ground. I make this artificial ground lantern that you pick up. And when it does that, it opens up a light onto this one chair that's on stage. Then from there, it's pretty easy to take the cat interaction we had at the campfire and insert it here. And I've been in the habit recently of juggling different parts of the game at the same time. So while this is all happening, I've done so much work with with control.
control nodes recently that I kind of decided it might be a good idea to rework the pause menu that I had because the old one was really bad. I figured while I'm at it, if I'm all in on this theater motif, on top of adding on all these extra options and features, the redesign now has this cool theater aesthetic. So at this point, I realized, yeah, I am all in. This is what the game's going to be about. Far Gone Frontier officially takes place in like a spooky theater. If this happens to be a mistake, then that's unfortunate, but I really have to just commit to something and hope for the best. And more importantly, I do think it's a cool idea. But quickly going back to the gameplay. So in Far Gone Frontier, pretty early on, I had these secret rooms. And honestly, I never really knew what to do with them aesthetically. Like I didn't want to draw new art for every floor whenever I had a secret room. But the nice thing is, this aesthetic choice with going behind the scenes kind of fixes that. Now when you bomb into a secret wall, you're literally going behind the stage of the game. It feels incredibly cute and charming, so I'm trying to lean into that as much as I can. A small side note here, but while I'm recording this video, in the background, I was sort of going back and forth with this YouTube channel, Blackthorn Prod, on working with them for a game jam. But I just bring that up to say I got shown a game design doc from a project, and it's so in-depth and well thought out that now I'm like, obviously, why don't I have this for my game? This is what everyone does. You make a game design doc, you follow it. I'm sure I won't do that second part, but you gotta lie to yourself. Adding that to the short list of things to do immediately. Ideally, uh, before this video is even done, I really should be doing it tonight, and not just uh, play Slay the Spire. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I'm off to make my long overdue game design doc. I mean, I'm really building this game it's so backwards, but I'm not gonna quit. We just keep pushing forward and keep learning stuff. Shout out to my Patreon subscribers. You guys are the best. I currently have all the art on there from all the game jams I've ever done, and I support anyone using them to make anything they want, including their own game. That would actually be pretty rad. I would really love to see that. All right, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.